All right, my name is Dr. Dax from Atlanta, Georgia. I started graffiti when I came to visit Atlanta in 1984. I came to visit my father here in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, the first thing I did when I came here was uh, jump on the Martin train with my brother to go to Lennox Mall to go play video games. And on the way to the mall, I was looking out the window and I had seen the first graffiti being the Five Kings and Sparky Z and Sir Leon. And when I saw those things, I didn't know what they were, but they definitely gave me like goosebumps and sparked a fire inside me. And I asked my brother what it all was. And he told me that it was graffiti. And uh, man, I just, I became obsessed from then. And then in 85, I got to move to Atlanta and I started pursuing actually drawing it. And then by the 90s, I was actually doing it. I'd say I'd say I got my style when I was pretty young, you know. Looking at Sir Leon and all those guys, I didn't really realize how much influence they had had from New York at the time, but I was influenced from them so much and channeled so much of that energy. And uh, I pretty much knew right off the rip where I wanted to go with it. And uh, unfortunately, in the, in the early 90s, style style changed from like traditional graffiti into like very teched out art school, um, lots of character building. And uh, I always like really stayed true to the letter form. And it's kind of come full circle now in the 2000 teens. And uh, that's why I'm here right now, I think. I think I've finally come full circle in my thing, you know? For many, I've gone through many years of like a roller coaster ride of like what I do being cool and not cool. And now it's kind of hit a peak of being like, it's like the shit now. And um, I guess I'm at the forefront of it now be, being the one who's lasted the longest around here. Me being me and Say, being, a, being Atlanta writers that are developed in Atlanta as children to now. When I think back on Atlanta graffiti, um, I always think of the first guys, which they still to me were like kind of the freshest. They always kind of, they always stayed within the boundaries, but also remained original. Like being Sir Leon, Rad 69, the whole Five Kings crew, Sparky Z. Um, and then later, you know, spawning people like me and Save. And then people who spawned from that would be like Juan Tu. You know, Poe came from New York already with his own thing, but he's definitely, uh, he's definitely like made a place for himself here. You know, Baser and SB, those have always been my guys. They've taught me a lot. SB being the one who taught me the most, probably. Being, I, I consider him my sensei. I'd say the biggest influences on my style would be, um, I don't know, like Big Git from Goody Mob. Me and him went back and forth on style, especially as far as like how we dress and stuff, but even all those things. Just being very colorful and flamboyant, and um, I don't know, I guess uh, starving for attention. You know, that, that, that helped uh, influence my style, just to make it brighter and bolder, you know, just to make it more in your face. I also started choosing spots to do my stuff that, like, whether you wanted to see it or not, you had to see it. I just, to, I just wanted to make sure people saw it, whether they were looking for it or not. Most of the messages that I put in my art are things that I come up with when, um, I don't know, they just pop in my head, you know, like, I guess I, when I'm living through things, and I start thinking about, like, what I'm going through, and um, usually I, I come up with, a, It'll just be like a short quote in my head, you know, just like the, like when I came up with recently is people are like, I'm getting, I'm getting to be middle aged now and um, people are just like, you know, like you think it's too late for you, like you're getting older, this is like a young man's sport and I disagree with it totally and I, you know, it's something that popped in my head while I'm thinking about it. I said, uh, you know, never say never unless it's about being too late. So that's like something I've painted recently. And then sometimes I get inspired by like Ben Franklin quotes or I'll read Dr. Seuss or something and um, Sometimes I put my own twist on those or I just use them straight up because they're so, I don't know, they're so groundbreaking to me and life-changing that I feel like I, uh, the other people should read them. And, I, and it's a new way of communicating with my audience. As far as my graffiti goes, I, I see, as far as in Atlanta, I haven't, since, since it's become such a problematic thing, I've just, I haven't retired because I still, get, you know, sometimes like the back of a sound table, be like, hey man, like, I want you to do our fence, you know, or, and like, like Old Fourth Ward Factory had me do the Martin Luther King quote on the, um, on their storage container, you know, they, I get brought in to do my graffiti and it's still on the street and it's still in your face, but it's actually with permission and money behind it. And um, I see the more that I've become successful and the more I still thrive to want to be on the streets, I want to approach, uh, I think the more I build my name, the more acceptable I'm becoming to Atlanta and people wanting me to be on their stuff instead of forcing my stuff and doing it illegally. I can just go and approach you and be like, hey, I really like your, your, your wall. Can I do my thing here? And I see this in the near future. I feel like I can paint on anything I want with permission now, which has kind of always been my goal is to paint on these spots and not necessarily be a, be a jerk and, and vandalize their things out of a rebellion, but just like the, just the need to express myself and, and this being the best place for what I'm trying to uh, put out here. 
be in this spot. So I think that the, the more I build my name and I, and I become a, an outstanding member of these communities, that I, they'll, they'll be accepting and allow me to do whatever I want. And then as far as um, my art goes in galleries, I just wanna, I would like to move into doing three-dimensional wood sculptures and uh, even do large abstract uh, pieces. I just, I would like to keep developing my art for galleries and, I, and at the same time, I would like to, uh, my presence on the streets to be more. I try to change the world by leading by example, you know? You can try to beat, beat ideas and um, your ways into people, but you only, it only uh, takes, you, takes them further away from whatever you're trying to change. I try to change the world with positive messages and also leading by example racially. You know, make money, be friends with uh, other races, have racial harmony. When people see you together with your friends and you build crews of people who, of, with, of uh, many races, I think the people who don't like that, they look at it and they're like, wow, we're really missing out on something because, you know, gay people have stuff to offer, black kids, I don't care what race you are, everybody has something to offer. And when you join forces, man, it, it, it goes so, it goes, you take yourself light years ahead and, and the people with you. And I think the people who sit back and hate that, they look at it and they might, I, I think you change people's minds, at least, at least, at least one person. But uh, I've definitely noticed that people who used to be against it, have, uh, they've conformed and they've, they're getting with the times. And I think if everybody does that, that's the best way to change the world. And uh, I, I feel like I got a, you know, a head start on that, just hooking up with the Dungeon family in the past and all of us, and even us having racial tensions amongst ourselves. The Dungeon family being an all black crew, you know, UCA crew was an old crew here, it was all black. And, um, you know, hooking up with certain members of those crews changed the minds of other black guys. Cause they used to be like, man, who, why, you know, who brought the white boy around or whatever? And then after a while, you know, their minds would even change. They started saying how I put stuff on the table and we put stuff on the table together and how we moved forward and for the better. And um, instead of arguing, man, just don't even talk to people about it. You should just lead by example. If you have an idea, show everybody. Don't tell them about it. Most people can't hear anything. They gotta be shown.